Oh, hey everybody, it's me again, Omari Akil, and you're watching episode two of The Breakdown. I'm a game designer, and on this show, I'm gonna use what I know about design to describe the concepts and mechanics that goes into this week's game. I've interviewed the designer to find out a little bit more about their process and inspirations. So are you ready for the breakdown? All right, let's do it. The game this week is Pavlov's Dogs. Did you hear that? Hmm. Wait, why am I hungry? Ugh, never mind. Pavlov's Dogs is the latest game by designer Heather O'Neill and publisher Ninth Level Games. Heather also designed Meeple Party, which released just last year, and another game with a scientific spin, Schrodinger's Cats. Let's do a quick overview of the game first. Pavlov's Dogs is a cooperative game for two to eight players where you use your doggy instincts to try to pass a series of tests and of course earn the approval of the doctor. Dog, dog, doctor. The tests are simple enough in theory as players one by one flip over cards and respond based on the type of card that's played and the rules that are in play. But you should know that the test will become more challenging as the game progresses and more rules are added. The game has a small number of components. There's 76 cards, 24 dog tokens, and one test folder. And the test folder is a somewhat unique component that's used to hold the rule cards that only the doctor needs to seize as the tests are going on. Now before we jump into mechanics too much, we need to talk about one of the most important inspirations for this game, and that's Schrodinger's Cats. Heather said that by the time Schrodinger's Cats was being released in 2016, she already knew she wanted to make a game called Pavlov's Dogs. Ideally, a game that similarly sized with the same kind of light, fun, engaging gameplay as Schrodinger's Cats. So if you're a dog nerd, a cat nerd, or both, there's a game for you. Now, as a designer, I really appreciate the idea of being inspired by your own work. So whether it's a name or a theme or a character or a mechanic you just want to dig into more, I think there's a lot of value in letting your previous ideas propel you into new ones. Mechanically speaking, Pavlov's Dogs is a memory and recall game, but there's a lot more to that since the entire design is based around early 1900s research by Ivan Pavlov. In one of his signature studies, he incorporates the ringing of a bell into a dog's feeding routine, eventually reaching the point where the sound of the bell on its own is enough to stimulate the same biological responses that would normally only come from eating, and this concept is called conditioning. Now Heather said she ended up scrapping an earlier version of the game back in 2017 because it didn't really do a good job of modeling that conditioning experience, so not really living up to the Pavlov name. That led to almost a year break in development, which was picked back up again in 2018 with a focus on creating a core mechanic that felt more like a conditioning test. Now what she has now seems to do just that. One player is a doctor, all other players are involved in the test. As test subjects on your turn, you flip over a test card, which looks like this, and place it on the stack of other test cards and then call it a number. Now that's the foundation of the gameplay, but the conditioning is modeled as rules are added. Each rule card will affect the way you respond at a certain time and in a certain way. And these are all shown to all players at the beginning of each test and hidden for only the doctor to see while the test is being conducted. Now, here's an example of a rule card, Abby Maslow which will require you to bark every time a bell card is revealed. Now this is a simple association that will, if you're a good dog, conjure the appropriate response when you see a bell card hit the table. Now theoretically, the more time you spend with a single rule, the more automatic these associations become which is a very similar process to conditioning. This plays out during the course of the game where you go through a specific number of tests, adding a new rule to the previous ones at the start of each, hoping you've internalized the rules of the previous test, because if you haven't, well, that's when things get bark. I mean, rough. I mean, difficult. Designing a game that includes rule changes means that you need a few levels of gameplay that can be altered or modified. Heather pulled one of these layers from the simple edition card game 99. Now 99 is played with a standard deck of cards where every time a card is played, you take the value of that card, add it to the previous total, and then call out the new total. 
the exact same thing happens in Pavlov's dogs. She also told me there were a few versions of the game that were more similar to 99, but ended up being too complicated and math focused and ultimately had to be thrown out. Uh, the other layers are built into the test cards themselves, where each card has three components, a number, a color, and a single word. In a game designed around quickly processing information, it's a good idea to keep things simple, but having more components on a card does give you a few more options when developing rule cards. Some of the cards were inspired by other games as well. One specifically that Heather mentioned was Uno. There are several rule cards that either reverse the order of play or skip the next player. And these are such fun, simple, and strong mechanisms in Uno, it would make sense that they would also be effective in Pavlov's dogs. Now this is just a reminder to me that even the smallest mechanisms have the potential to add a lot to a game. Now it's quite clear how important the theme was for Heather. One of the things she was the most proud of were all the dog puns, Dogter being the favorite. Since the game features dogs based on real-life psychologists and philosophers, she was really excited to get to add some background information about each of them in the last few pages of the rulebook. Pavlov's Dogs has a live campaign going on on Kickstarter right now, so if you're interested, jump over to the video description for a link. And again, I'm Omari Akil. Thanks for joining me. This was the breakdown of Pavlov's Dogs. See you soon.